السلام علیکم سعیدی از دیر اینی کنیکشن بیٹوین آور سیون نیمز اینڈ دا فائیو لیولز آف دا ہارٹ فائیو لیولز آف دا ہارٹ Yeah, the Lataif of the Qab, you have to get the book of the Lataif of the Qab and this way of marifa, the way of meditation, again the curriculum we teach. If you can get the books on our website, the list of the books or the, the moderators will put the link on Amazon. Depending upon if you're outside of an Amazon area, you can order directly from the SMC store or if uh, in an Amazon area you can get it faster from Amazon. But you, you You get the books and, and study them and you'll see the link in everything or you read it from the website, the nurmuhammad.com website and these are the lataifs and the like uh, realities and openings, what we call lataif like a, a veil that you're going into this cave and you go into each of these realities to find more about ourselves. So our names and the importance of our names are spiritual pursuit and the reality of our being. So all, all things are interconnected, they can, how can they not be, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam In timeless reality it is recommended to make our madad with salawat playing. Should we do part two of daily awrad with salawats? Please forgive my ignorance. The part two? The Allah Allah. Yeah, any part. You can do the beginning part of the madad, the short verses making the connection. And then you put on the salawats and you can make your Allah and the, the salawats and do them in your heart and focus on your heart, inshaAllah. What did we talk about last week? I wonder if the people from the last week's talks, did they get those talks? Did they put the questions somewhere and we don't have them? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, there's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We, the questions should be follow-ups to the talks, that after they hear the talks they should be putting them into action and trying to understand a, a greater, deeper reality, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Can you please talk more about how the teacher takes away the difficulties of the students in tariqah? Sorry for bad adab. No bad adab. Takes away the difficulties that, yeah, people may ask like that, and other people may sort of confer that uh, that's <clears throat> too much for people to understand. That it's, it's a commonsensical like energy. So, the most easiest way to understand is the energy that the negative flows towards the positive charge. So that's just the, the laws of energy, that every negative charge will flow towards a more positive charge.
So if I release a negative charge and I put out a positive charge, what happens? The negative will come towards the positive. But you can't be without charge. As a result of releasing your negative charge, Allah will give you a positive charge in return. But how do you do that if you're alone? That would then be through your spiritual practices. Is that you have to call upon charges and power that are more powerful than yourself. As soon as you pray, you're calling upon a very powerful Divine energy. As soon as you go into sujood, you're calling upon a very powerful energy and the negative will leave and the positive will be recharged. As soon as you go out into nature, they describe your reground and they say the action is within fragment of a second. As soon as you don't feel good or you feel burdened, you immediately step on grass and go next to nature where it has the natural vibrations of the heavens, immediately it will recharge all your electrons, ionization, all of these different terms of which I'm none of them familiar with, but basically recharge your entire being. So these are many different examples for people whom or try to understand what does he mean by the shaykh is going to help him. Everything around us helps us. Your backyard helps you, walking on a trail helps you, walking on a mountain helps you, walking around nature helps you because they all have a positive energy given to them by Allah and a result of their positive energy. And we're the creation that keep playing with electronics and negative and all sorts of negative uh, realities. As soon as we come near them, they take all of the negative and give to us a positive and the ocean. So anytime we go near nature, we feel much better. Now also Divine associations in which Prophet described, don't leave the circles of paradise. If you see a circle of paradise, stop, eat and graze from it. Means take abundant food and water from that circle of paradise, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, what are the circles of paradise? And these are the halaqahs of zikrullah. So it means there's a tremendous angelic force, a divinely heavenly force. And as soon as we come near them or bring them into our home and watch the live or the rebroadcast, we're making ourselves because Allah granted that as soon as you become from a, a, a people, you share in their good and bad deeds. So if they're good people, tariqah people, the dhikr associations, as soon as you watch it, you're sharing in that barakah, you're making your home a part of that halaqah. Now for Allah it's not hard to expand the halaqah infinitely. As soon as they do these good actions, their positive energy immediately is pulling all the negative energy from people. The shaykh then is like a nucleus of that reality, that their reality is a positive energy. So anything that is around them, they're pulling the negative away and in exchange giving people back positive energy. And it's not only the physicality of the shaykh. But it's the arwa that's the most important. So that's why they teach people is the madad. When people truly understand the madad means that they can call upon a positive portal of energy. So as soon as they connect their heart, they're calling on these souls, they live and they pass, the living souls or the ones whom have passed. Allah said, don't look at them as dead, they're very much alive in their grave. So it means that their souls are present with you with tremendous power. And as soon as you ask to be in their presence, وَكُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ Allah Zawajal describes for us, ittaqullah, you should have a consciousness, وَكُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ Keep the company of sadiq, Allah doesn't care for dunya, so what is He making reference to? Kunuma sadiqeen means keep the company of truthful servants. Day and night 
That's your muraqaba training. Why? Because they come with a positive light. Now where Allah has that in salah, Salaamu Alaykum Ayyuhan Nabi wa Salaamu Alaykum Ibadullahi Salihin. That even in the salah Allah is reminding us that give your salams to Prophet and Ibadullahi Salihin and the pious servants that are facing you that you don't see. As a result, they're in the room with you, they're dressing you, blessing you. Their positive energy is taking away all the negative energy. People think it's their salah that has power but it's not because shaitan is inside of you. You didn't get rid of shaitan inside of you, it's not your salah that has power. But it's that Allah will bless you with the power of salah. Not that you have power but Allah will bless you with the power of salah. Because He has you saying it in the, in the du'a, in the tahiyyat, as salaamu alaykum ayyuhan nabi, means the Prophet is there present with the one whom prays, wa ibadullahi salihin and all the servants whom are righteous servants of the Divine that you don't see, they don't interfere with you, they're all around you when you're praying. And the angels whom are in charge of that huruf. That's why I said we talked a lot last week but we got no questions from it. So I don't know if people listening or you're missing the questions from them. The guys, the moderators are also picking up the questions, yeah from all these talks they should index them somewhere and somebody should be listening to these talks and coming up with questions. Yeah because last week we talked about it nobody said anything. That you're praying and the power of your salah is actually in the huruf. That Allah has you making a alif and standing because people can think they just came into Islam and the power and the prayer is so powerful and just because you're standing there you, you have now all of a sudden a power you didn't have before. So where is the power in praying? Or you thought it was in your prayer that you're making but shaitan is inside of you, where is that power? No but it's in the action that you do. Allah has many realities of why that's powerful. One of them is that huruf, the angel who's in charge of the alif in which you're imitating when you stand upright. Immediately when you stand upright in alif that angel is dressing you from izzatullah and many other understandings of what that alif represents. And as soon as you go into ruku you've now imitated the ha. And the angel of Ha dresses the servant that the servant has come and has been now in the dress of the Ha in his worshipness of Allah And then again he comes back up and then again the Alif will dress the servant. And as soon as the servant goes into sujood he makes a meme, his belly and his head hits the ground. So the meme has the circle and the line to where his head hits the ground. The angel of Mim now dresses the servant because each, each, each huruf has a, a servant, qa, a, a, qa, a qadam, the, the servant of the huruf who guards it. So they dress the servant, now he's in Mim, he comes to tahiyyat, the angel in the dal is dressing now that servant. And all the realities of dalil and guidance of sujood and the reality of meme and the Muhammadan kingdom. That's why when you study the huruf from the abjad and the people whom are capable of studying the abjad and the reality of the huruf that you're, you're making Ahmad Every time they're praying They're making this huruf and the angels in charge of all these immense realities is dressing that servant. So the salah has many realities and those whom are witnessing the dress they're preying upon the servant. As a result these servants have immense dressings and auras about them. So that's the the powers and towards the understanding of these actions that we do and the realities of these actions.
and their importance. And that's why Allah wants for the servant, pray, well Allah doesn't need the prayer. Allah doesn't become richer nor poorer for the servant who decides not to pray or the servant who decides he's going to pray and, well Allah didn't give me what I wanted so I'm not going to pray which foolishness they think is like Allah cares and don't jump off the roof or hurt yourself it doesn't matter. But these were all a barakah for you that Allah wanted you to have power, wanted you to be protected, want the angels to dress your eternal soul because in the end everybody goes up and says, uh, I got nothing. Well you got nothing, you, you didn't want to do anything. But the one whom did what Allah asked of them and dressed from what Allah gave to them, they should be immensely astonished at what Allah has dressed of them, blessed them, given to them and taken from them of difficulties and badness. So everything is based on Allah's immense rahmah and immense mercy. But shaitan fools our characteristic and understanding to deceive us and think that, oh the prayer has like a, a certain power from myself, why should I give that to Allah astaghfirullah. But Allah is giving us so many ways to be blessed, so many ways to be dressed by energies. You know that the, when they complain about why they have sickness, why they have this, why they, they go back and say, are you praying? No, I really can't, I'm sick. Oh so your priority is off. When you know you're getting sick you should be praying much more, it's a shield of energy. You know they, oh I, I was busy with work so I couldn't do my khidmat. Well your, your priority is off, your service comes first, that's what opens everything. Your ibadah and worshipness comes first. That's what opens and protects you from everything and these are just towards the realities of how they're doing that. That why do you have a shield? It's not from you because you're just coming in or somebody's coming in, they haven't built anything. But each of these letters have an immense power. Each time we enter into salah Allah is giving the eyes of these holy souls to watch over those whom imitate their way. And their form of salah was most powerful from amongst all the Prophets of Allah because it's under the Sultanate and the King and the, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So much so that Allah wanted it for all His Prophets. So the Isra when Prophet was sent to the souls of all the Prophets, they called the Muhammadan Azan and then they prayed the Muhammadan Salah in which all of them prayed Ahmad, Alif, Ha, Mim, Dal and gave their tahiyyat and shahada to Sayyidina Muhammad And this is the verse and today I have completed your faith and the faith of Allah is Islam. So means that's a reality that the only re religion of Allah the only true religion of Allah the only way to fight shaitan is through Islam and the only way to reach towards Allah's immense power oceans is through Islam and everything else is finished, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah So is the dress of the huruf of the salah different from the energy of mimicking the huruf through martial arts? Yeah, they're different realities of course that, but it's the same concept that every, every huruf has a reality, right? So even just the knowledge of the huruf shows the immensity. So the, it's they're like packages that once you bring the alif it's infinite. It's not the same dress every time, one time is the understanding and knowledge of alif. Then we described Alif becomes Alif, Alif again, Lam Fa because the sound opens that huruf. Means infinite dress of Alif upon the servant. That's why every salah has a different dress. It's not the same, Allah's not recycling that they ran out of barakah in the heavens so they have to recycle it. Every salah has its different tajalli. And every huruf is continuously giving its knowledges and its realities.
For martial arts is one understanding to bring out these energies. That's why when they meditate and they sit and they make the muraqaba, it's the most important step of all of these processes is to meditate, to make yourself to vanish. When you vanish and ask for the tajalli of the shaykh to dress you and then practice then your energy training. So then you're practicing bringing energy out and feeling energy, becoming acquainted with the malakut, the, the world of light. So all of it is based on meditation, all of it is based on the connection and not physical strength. It's based on the spiritual strength and the, the spiritual guidance and isharat that begins to come through their spiritual connection. So alhamdulillah has very deep, deep understandings and then the disciplines in which they put upon themselves then opens more of its understandings of energy. And those energies then are more jalali that they're used for combat and protection than the meditation energy that may be more jamal and more beatific. So depending upon the needed use of them then those are the practices and the, 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 the realities of those practices inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah So is it also the power of the huruf that also enables the servant to make a miraj during salah? Now we're all going to get a huruf questions now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's an understanding of huruf, it's Allah that allows the servant to make the miraj, right? So when the servant becomes more subtle through their muraqaba that they broke through their cage. So every servant is a, is a bird in a cage. The more you do your meditation what happens with the cage? It becomes more malleable. The bars of the cage become so soft that you at your own discretion can move the bar and like a bird go out free. The bird goes and comes back because it has to come back to the body otherwise the body will, will die. So the, the reality is that the more you're meditating, doing your tafakkur, making your cont contemplation the bars of the cage become much softer so that the person can send their soul out and to reach towards that energy and reach towards the sustenance of that reality. The understanding of the huruf brings a tremendous energy and those energies go to again make the bars to be soft, right? Because the energy in this whole meditation tafakkur process is that you're bringing energies that make your physicality and the bars to become smaller, smaller and malleable where like butter you can move them and you're free to move with your soul and feel the energy of your soul, do the zikr with your soul, pray with your soul. So all of those are based because of energy. When the person doesn't do any energy practices, they don't do any of the meditation, everything's based on their body. They pray with their body, they do the zikr with their body and they feel nothing because the body doesn't feel anything. The one whom builds their soul builds the connection towards the heavens and then they feel the salah, they feel the, the dhikr, they feel their, their martial art, they feel everything. They feel the knowledges and the reality and the connection to the knowledges, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa During the Prophet's Isra wal Miraj, did we have a place or role in it and how can we learn and understand? A role in the Miraj that those in the reality of Prophet that they're within Sayyidina Muhammad and that wherever Prophet is moving, his ashiqeen and all this creation is moving. So it's a definite reality 
And that's why to know the marifa is important in the way of knowledge. That when you know something you understand its correct adab and its correct manners. That Prophet is moving towards Allah So we don't say that we're going on a miraj to Allah and making it like a competition but we say, no we are in the heart of Prophet So we are making a miraj into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad so definitely that's why the knowledge is sets our understanding straight. They say, then what you know you stand by it and stand to your limit. That's why when children speak they don't know their limit and their, their talk is, 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 is not correct. That's the concept of marifa that they want to talk everything Allah, Allah, Allah but that then becomes insulting to Prophet and the way of marifa is to give us a correct understanding that you stand behind the line and that we are in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's the, the benefit of marifa is to understand these realities and to understand our place within that reality. So that one we're not incorrect in our movement towards the d Divine and that at any time we're not uh, being insulting to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. That adab is what opens for us nearness and proximity because Allah's pleased with the servant who has good manners. It's just common sense, imagine if you keep thinking you're next to Allah then where does that put Prophet You're putting that behind you stuff in Allah? That's like when they go to Medina and they openly want to be rude and they say, turn your back when you make du'a. What du'a would possibly be accepted when your back is towards Sayyidina Muhammad and your hands are to Allah? You feel like somebody come down and hit you on the head like, what are you doing? Turn back around the other way. But shaitan and those people of shaitan they always want to make the manners to be bad so the du'a won't be accepted. So that's why adab is so important that you have to face Sayyidina Muhammad You can never be rude to that reality and hope that Allah is listening to you. So that, that's the common sense of it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah In your talk last week about frequency and the need to be rooted so our buildings don't fall when testing comes, are we going to hear and see the planned frequency war? Are you going to hear and see the frequency war? I think in that talk, that's what I'm saying, we talked all these things and we didn't hear anything from them. That we're already under that. <coughs> so uh, all of these talks when you come back and say, the shaykh has been describing for years we are under a frequency war, right? Humans are definitely being uh, violated. The jinn kingdom and satanic kingdoms that run the, the nefarious and bad jinn kingdoms, their interest is to destroy humanity. So. Your oven, your microwave, your phone, your television, your music player, everything, your computers, <coughs> printers, everything is radiating at the 2 to 5.7 megahertz which is your cellular brainwave frequency. They could have made it on a different frequency you would imagine but no because they want to fry you. So every time you turn a device on something cooking in your head. Right? So the cells are cooking, you're under energy attack all day, all night. So it only makes common sense that, oh you don't think that they found bigger machines? So now they show them. They park near there and they turn on the machine and 5,000 buildings oh, crumbled. And that's a spiritual ishara. When you see an attack you take a guidance, so make that like physical. You look and say, somebody just got physically hit, 
but they shattered very fast and bizarrely. So what would that tell you as a student of energy and energy practices? You'd look to a person and say, something's off in their system. You know, they should have trained, they should have fortified, they should have built themselves not to go down like that, you know, go down to your knee, maybe fall and tumble a little bit, but shatter like that, something's wrong. So material people are all there now looking, say, how this happened like this? Then they found out, oh, the corruption of, of bad people that only interested in building a facade, look how everything crumbled. And that's horrific. So now there's many crimes, one the crime of this atrocity and the crime of why people build structures like that and the crime that people have to build themselves and that uh, people need to have more sincerity and don't take bribes, you know, to pass over building regulations. Look how many thousands of people suffered because of those. So there's many, many isharats in everything Allah sends. One for the spiritual person that I shouldn't be shaking like that if somebody sends an energy and attacks me. It may hurt, I may fall down but it may show my weakness so I spiritually should be building myself. If the shaykh is telling me every day I'm being attacked, yeah everybody's being attacked, we all get pains and, and, and things that are coming. So you build yourself, you keep yourself with wudu, wudu, you make sure everything has your taweezes. You did your one step, the rest is Allah Then you make your madad, you're being attacked, you call upon your, your shaykhs, you call upon Prophet you play your salawats and you begin to make your own vibration of energy that tries to counter whatever energy they're sending to attack because it's going to be an energy battle. It's not going to be, you know, just somebody doing something physical and physical relief will come. But the one whom doesn't practice anything based on energy, doesn't practice anything to build their energy, I would imagine they're going to go down faster than those buildings. They just collapse and crumble when something hit to them. So that becomes a sign for the believer, everything's a sign from Allah I looked and said, why did it shatter like that? InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi you taught us that the armor for a believer against frequency devices is wudu and taweez. Should we share links on a post of a prominent Islamic figure talking against taweez? No because these are uh, people whom uh, you don't, we don't need to argue with people. We don't need to argue about this or that. That doesn't solve our, our, our situation, that just becomes one of those buildings that are going down fast. <laughs> you know that's the one who when they want to, to find something wrong in the tariqah teachings and in the hadith and they play with words, amulet, amulet is not allowed, amulet is not allowed. So this whole game is words. Amulet is if you take a bunch of bones and put around your neck because like an African tribe they had amulets. These were like bones that would ward off spirits. Yeah we don't do that, we don't do anything bodparast and idolatrous. But ruqya there's many hadiths on it, they don't tell you that. So they take one word and they tell you this is wrong. So they say taweez is amulet and an amulet has now been said this about it. Well no that's not true, they're lying. Ruqya is the taweez and ruqya is to invoke Allah's names, Allah's Divinely names and the names of pious people to read Qur'an to heal. Well that's the whole of Islam and the hadith of the companions doing it and the companions did it for people who were poisoned and attacked. And they charged a fee for it because they were hungry and asked for a fee and Prophet said, yes definitely any act of ruqya you can charge for it. But that's how they'll play with people. But the tariqah doesn't need to prove to anyone, if they don't want that taweez, alhamdulillah for them. 
they're going to go down faster than those buildings in Turkey. So just leave to people their own bad character and our responsibility is to teach the ways of the heavens and to build people and it becomes also a sign of humility. The servant whom is humble with Allah that Allah defend them against difficulties and hardships. And everything in Islam is tabarak, everything in Islam is to seek a means towards Allah's rida and satisfaction. And we have the talks on the websites all about tab tabarak. Why did you go to the Kaaba? Why did you kiss the black stone? Because it has blessings. Why do you do Safa Marwa? Why do you drink Zamzam? Why don't you just go get water from Costco or from grocery store? Because it has tabarak, it has the blessings in it. So everything that we do is to seek a means towards these blessings. So writing Qur'an is a protection. That's why go look and research Islamic chivalry and Islamic armory. If you look back at the time of the Holy Companions, their swords, their armory were all Qur'anic writings upon them. All the different phrases of la hawla wa la quwwata, there wasn't a shield, a sword or helmet or anything that didn't have written upon them uh, for ruqya, to be protected, to put out an energy and a protection and that to make their armament to be much more powerful, energized by the qadim, the angels that guard these letters and these huruf. So yeah even Khalid ibn Walid salam carried the holy hair of Prophet in his holy turban. They wanted so much ruqya and they wanted so much barakah and they wanted so much blessings. This is Islam, inshaAllah. But uh, people want to follow these people who now are, are building a competing Kaaba. They call Mu Kaaba. <laughs> yeah, this is the Abrar. Well, who's the one who built that? <laughs> <laughs> the elephant, yeah. He built the, the, a competing uh, Mecca because he said, why are you going there? I'll make something grand and come to mine. Exact same mentality. Oh, we got these billions of dollars coming in from Hajj, why well, we don't just send them to our casinos and our, you know, these clubs that we're making, you know, with Allah shake them like an earthquake. So three times that region was shaken. Everything will open. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa For a weak and neglected heart, does love come before good character or does good character lead to love? Good, good character, again I'll, I'll not free to do with everyone but everything is, is based on good character. Without good character how would we know what love is and that how would, how would we know not to destroy it? So love like a little kitten, you know if you grab it and shake it and yell at it and, and hit it it's, it's, not, it's not going to be an, a, a nice relationship with that. We'll be angry every time you come around. So I think everything is based on good character. So how, how could you find the love of the shaykh if the shaykh's character is not good? You say, oh this is a very important shaykh but every time he's angry, he's this, he's all, every type of ridiculous characteristic, nobody would be sitting around him. So the, the, what attracts people is going to be the good character. So first the student has to learn good character because then to say one day I'm going to be a, a teacher and I'm going to, I'm going to gather people towards these knowledges. You can have all the knowledge you want but if you're like sandpaper and then nobody can stand being around you then it's going to be difficult. So then the first teachings they gave was then accompany the shaykh and he takes everybody from who's a steak and makes them into ground beef. Right? Just keep grinding them, grinding them, grinding them, bring them down, bring them down, bring them down so that everybody can be humble and learn to serve and to be good, to be happy, to be kind. And that's why we say not every shaykh is like that because you, we're on the internet and we're finding all the shaykhs they're like hutlums. 
like you know they want to fight because what kind of tariqah is that, what kind of Islam is that? But alhamdulillah at least we were trained to be loving and to be kind and this is the way that we are putting out the teaching and from what we understand of Prophet is to have a loving and kind demeanor so that the people learn the same characteristic and that if you come across any of these students they should have that same demeanor. As a result then I would imagine love can open and to be loving because you have to first love yourself and have to be loving and have a loving character. And as a result then that, that reality would open more and more, inshaAllah. But if we don't understand what that character is then it would be difficult to identify it and, and to attract somebody with a loving character and loving demeanour. InshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.